Guys, what's up? It's Medic, and I'm here at the studio working on, kaboom, a 3D printed snowblower for my Kyosho Blizzard. Now, folks that have seen the show already know that my Blizzard is heavily modified, not completely modified. I do have stock motors in there, but everything else, the sound kit and the Sabertooth ESC, all that neat stuff has already been done to this machine plus a little extra. You must be wondering what this blue mount is up front, or maybe you hadn't noticed until I had said it. Well, this isn't completely assembled yet. What am I doing with this servo? Well, I'll tell you, you've already read the title of the video, so here it is. This is, look at this gnarly machine. This is a snowblower designed by Spiker Workshops. My buddy Ryan down there does not know I'm doing a video on this. I did hint at it in the last video that I did, but uh, he created and designed this, printed it off on his 3D printer, and had it assembled. Now I had to pay for assembly of this part and the whole unit was uh, you know, on the expensive side for some of us, uh, but for the amount of work, effort, time, dedication, design, capability, and everything else I've seen about this, it totally is going to be worthwhile. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I don't have any affiliation to these guys, but I'll leave a link in the video description box down below if you wanna go check it out or if you think this is neat and you wanna investigate it. Uh, uh, even if you have a 3D printer, I know that they offer the STL files, I think they're called, uh, <laughs> for purchase as well for a pretty good price. But look at this, I have been working on it. Not everything comes assembled. I'm still having to put the motor on, the, uh, the, the, the band that goes around, the pinion and all that neat stuff, but look at that. It even has slider bars on the bottom. So, I am working on this, and I was working on this off camera, and I thought, you know, I'll just get this done and show it to you guys working, but I know there's a lot of folks out there that do enjoy uh, when I'm building things that are unique, or exciting, or new, and you just kind of want to wrench on your RCs while I'm working on mine. So, break out your tools, I'm going to show you some of this stuff that I have going on, really simple jobs for me today, and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so on the back of this giant blower, now, and it's not that heavy for folks that are wondering, oh my God, that must be heavy. Yeah, the, the motor is adding weight. The weight of the plastic is quite heavy, uh, but heavy is all in relative statement, right? Like really this weighs close to nothing. Comparatively to the blizzard, it will be a weight on the front, but you kind of want that as you're sliding along for the snow and ice to get chipped up inside for what it can grab. Now this here, is actually a servo that I'm going to use. I would don't need to use such a heavy servo. I would use a lighter uh, power servo, but this is the waterproof servo I have on hand today. So I'm going to be mounting this up. It already came in this kit with this uh, uh, custom pinion on there that's there to turn the actual um, snow chute. Here, let me just change this view for you. The snow chute comes off after you've assembled it and has these teeth on here, basically making it into a gear. This back cover I took off or left off for you guys to see the inner workings of this. Here, I'll get it close so you can see. It's such a neat looking unit. I've made sure that the tension isn't too tight on this belt, says so in the, uh, in the instruction book, and check it out. I am using, using a Tekken 35 turn brush motor. Now everybody's going to be like, well, you should totally put a brushless in that, but it warns you right in the instruction book, you do so at your own risk. It does become, uh, from using RC snowblowers before, it, there is a point where you don't need it to go so fast. You just need it to chew the snow and get it the heck out. Out. So I'm going to use the brushed, the heavy duty version of that motor because it does have some speed, does have some grunt, and I am using a 12 tooth pinion. It does come with other pinion options depending on the type of motor you want to put in there. So uh, with the back, this back case will be fitting right on there. But what I need to do is to hook up that servo on top. Now my first instinct when I looked at it without reading the instruction book was, oh, that's never gonna fit there. You know, it's too big. <laughs> but if you look at it closely, it's actually printed to have a bit of a groove in there. So 
I would fit it in upside down like so. Now the problem is I do have these little gussets here on the servo. You can see that it kind of, they're little uh, triangles there. I'm gonna have to cut those out. So safety glasses on, Dremel out, cutting disc active. Clean it up with a razor, get all those little pieces out. Beautiful. Here we go, you can see it's nice and clean. And we'll see how it fits. So, angle it in there. <laughs> Beautiful. That's exactly how it was supposed to fit in there. So now I just got to bolt down the two on either side and it should be good to be bolted back onto uh, the actual snowblower. And cover on, just making sure that all of these screws are tight. And they are. Servo now on. Now we can see when the servo horn moves, or I'll just move it with the big part, you can actually have the chute go directional. Now, I was very careful when I was setting up the mesh of that uh, gear right here, because I didn't want it to be too tight, right? I wanted to make sure that there was enough motion and movement, but the Savox waterproof servo is in place. The chute is uh, mobile, and so I'm excited to get that hooked up and looked at. Uh, I am going to need to run a different radio, so I haven't set up everything quite yet, but let's have a look at this front mount. Now inside, like I kind of gave you a little bit of a look, you did have to disassemble uh, this whole chassis, so I had to take off each track on each side, which really isn't too hard. Remove this whole front assembly, as well as reposition uh, this support bar that was in front. Like, let me say that this one here was always here, but there was special brackets that came down that introduced this swing arm, okay? These two brackets came down here. If you guys order one, you'll actually see, or if you get the files, you'll understand, but there are some things that's just easier for me to do off camera. Now, a lot of folks that have the blizzard are wondering what this funny looking thing is. This is actually the throw arm for the shovel. And yes, people that are asking, can you still use the blade on the front? Yes, you can. All you have to do is uh, put together the special mount which is no extra pieces you just have to put it back together and he gives you the instructions to show you how to do that you just need to build a control arm and I haven't done the control arm yet here is the this is when it's raising and lowering the blade this would be lower this would be higher there is a control arm that fits on here I have to make it it'll fit through this slot and as it's going back and forth like that, it's actually lifting this up and down. Now I have started with the, uh, with the control arm. I'm going to have to actually work out the proper angle, right? Like you get a, just a rod and two rod ends, you control or you bend the control arm and you'll actually get the right clearance. Now that doesn't come included. And keep in mind, folks, this is all from a dude that's at home in his garage doing something cool. Like... How amazing is that? This is just some guy with an idea of going, hey, I know how to make RC cooler. I think I'll try to make it and put it on at home for people to buy. So how the heck is this gonna hook on to this machine? Great question. Well, you'll actually see with this front roller, it's got two outside pieces. Yeah, they kind of protrude from the side. They are actually pieces of the bracket that I put in. And it's actually just gonna, these notches are actually gonna go right on the round pieces themselves. This swing arm swings into place and now I bolt it here and I bolt it on the other side with these little screws that come included, of course. So I'm just gonna fit that. I love the magic of TV. It just takes moments to do anything. <laughs> so here, if I did have that swing arm, control arm, hooked up to this, to the servo, I would be able to lift this and lower it. Lift this 
and lower it. You are seeing giant bearings on the inside. Really, really nifty. Such innovation, hey? We've had really neat things on RC Adventures, and this is one of them. I wish I had it hooked up for you guys right now, but as you can see, it does take quite a bit of work. Uh, so I'm gonna keep on working on the wiring because I gotta get the Tekken uh, uh, set up to a separate ESC. I'm going to repurpose one of my FXRs. This is the ESC, or the brain, that will control this motor that will be plugged into a different receiver. Heck, I may have to go back to a uh, uh, a dual stick controller, even though I do love my pistol grip. Maybe I can set it up on auxiliary uh, number two, but if I wanted to have this turn at variable speeds, you know, I'm gonna have to see what I can do. It'd be easier to have this lift on one stick, up and down, and then of course uh, the speed can go up and down as well. Plus, we have to think about this servo that's going to be moving the chute left and right. Really got a good amount of thrill right there. I can center that up. And YouTuber that goes by the name of Wolfie actually wanted to look inside of my uh, uh, blizzard here. I apologize. It's completely a rat's nest. I know I should be punished for this kind of rat's nest of wires, but over time there has been a lot of stuff to scrunch in there. So I tried to zip tie it out of the way. This is actually the sound card I run to this giant speaker box in here. Check that out. Yeah, it's got dented. Doesn't affect it really too much uh, cause it's more of a bassy sound I'm looking for anyway. A big 7,000 milliamp two cell lipo and here, this is where I put my Sabertooth ESC on a piece of Velcro on the side. Well, there you go. Your first look at my snowblower on the front of my Kyosho Blizzard. Uh, this snowblower, again, designed by Ryan at the Spiker Workshops. I got to tell you. Uh, just pure genius. I love promoting innovation in RC, guys. Uh, I don't have the motor hooked up. I don't have the control arm hooked up. I'm sorry, it's just an overview, but it took a lot of work just to get to this point. Yes, it looks very heavy, but you guys have been with me a long time. I'm going to say, don't worry, it's not that heavy. I do have uh, my radio here, so you can see, even as I pull back just a quarter on the throttle, it moves it with ease. Now I'll push it just a bit. It's on rubber right now, so the rubber is actually preventing it from sliding easily. But out on the ice, out on the snow, no problem. <laughs> Check it out. Here, I do have my sound kit installed. You guys know that. This is how I turn it on, by the way. Up and then down. Starts it up. I could get these lights uh, to be programmed or on a different channel, but I like them just shooting random. So cool, dudes. Okay, so if I wanted this auxiliary, if I wanted this to move up or down, I'm gonna have to go in and make that control arm that goes from this piece right here to underneath this bracket. And there is a hole <laughs> behind the wire to show us that, and here's how I would control it, right here. Boop, 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 boop. So this is actually set up in my radio as a three position switch. It doesn't have to be, I can set it up as a two position switch. So that's no problem. Let's just turn off that sound kit. Let's give you a little honk of the horn. Honk. There we go, done. So we got a good look. Now you know uh, that this product exists. Maybe you knew it existed before. And with home-based products like this, you know, I try to jump on them and get some while they're available. Who knows? Even RC manufacturers, the big manufacturers, they only produce things for a certain amount of time. So I like it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Uh, you've discovered something new. Get some new ideas for your blizzard. And, uh, you know... Get out there, go have some fun with RC guys. At least get outside and give it a try. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode of RC Adventures and you're feeling satisfied in your RC addiction. Guys, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you've already supported the show, thank you so much and we will see you next time. Go out and have fun with RC. Bye.